Welcome back. You Thanks. know, this is your third time on ACL, your first time on this stage. So i got to ask out of curiosity, how did it feel compared to playing at the, uh, the old studio back in the day? It felt good. It's just a different place. You know, like the, there's so many ghosts in the old place. Like you can't help but think about your, your heroes and your legends that have played on that stage. And, and then you get here and it's kind of nice to have a fresh, you know, fresh, I don't even know what the word, fresh start, a fresh, <laughs> fresh slate. I don't know if you guys have felt that working here and being here so much. That's just kind of nice to have a fresh uh, place to come from. But I don't know. There's things I like about both of them. It surprised a lot of people when you decided a few months ago, I guess, to re-release It Still Moves, which was your third album. And I know you've already talked about it quite a bit, but uh, the reason for doing that was you never were quite satisfied with, with the original mix or with the original, the way it turned out, so I decided to take another shot at it. Yeah, it was twofold decision to re-release It Still Moves. One was ATO, it was their 15th anniversary, and they, so it was their idea originally to uh, re-release it, because that was the first record we did with them. Um, and when once they asked us that, that kind of got me thinking that, yeah, that was the only one really in our catalog that we were just rushed through the mixing process of it. And I don't know, for people who aren't familiar with recording and mixing and all that stuff, the recording of an album is when you're playing and singing and committing that stuff to tape. And then you take that stuff that you've recorded and you go mix it to make sure all your levels are, are good and it sounds the way you want it to. And when we mixed it, we tried to mix it first in Shelbyville at our studio there and just weren't getting good sounds with the gear we had. So we flew to Capitol and mixed it there and, and it sounded better, but we were in a hurry to get back on tour and it was just this big rush that uh, was just a real battle at the time. And uh, any touring bands probably know how we feel about that, the, the constant struggle of, you know, how long do you have to finish your record and you have to get on the road and yada, 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 which if I could ever offer a piece of advice to anybody would be don't ever hurry to get back on the road, finish your record, uh, the road can wait, cancel a few shows, cancel a month, you know, we, but we just didn't know. So yeah, once they asked us if we wanted to re-release it, um, I was just kind of like, yeah, that's a really cool idea, let's remix it and remaster it and uh, take it for another ride. So did that whole process of, of revisiting the past, I know you said it was like listening to a different person. Yeah. Did that, did you take anything away from that? Were there any lessons to be learned by spending so much time doing something over again? Oh my God, there were so many lessons to be learned. Yeah, it was weird because we I didn't want to change anything. You know, I, did, I didn't want to fix anything. I didn't want to, because you know, you listen to it as the you now, and you're like, oh, I, I could fix that. No, I could do that better. But you're like, that's not what it's about. That was you so long ago. So really, we just wanted to focus on the mixing and the mastering. And the cool thing was is that uh, Kevin Ratterman uh, mixed it so he would get a mix up and then we would come in, Patrick and I came in and listen and we we're like, oh, okay, it sounds great, mm -hmm. needs more reverb or needs less, whatever, you know, and we would make some notes. So that way we didn't have to get too deep into it because Kevin really cooked up the mix and got it going and then we would just say what we thought it needed. Because yeah, I, I have a hard time listening back to any of our stuff. Sometimes we have to review you know, songs that we haven't played in a long time. And, and it's really difficult for me because you do hear so much stuff that you would change because you're not the same person anymore. But I think that's also kind of the beautiful thing is it's like you're, you're just leaving trails, like echoes of, of who you were. And uh, you know that you tried as hard as you could back then and you did the best you could and then you walk away from it forever and try to be who you are now. The process is super... It's hyper emotional as well. So when you're listening back to all that stuff, you're trying not to let the shock of hearing that stuff cloud your judgment. But at the same time, you're seeing all these things and smelling all these smells and all these memories are coming back up from that point in your life. And so that's that's just a, an interesting byproduct of of re, revisiting something like that. It just it, it just brings it all back again, for better or for worse. I just feel like <clears throat> remixing is like having a, a different conductor conduct the same piece of music. Mm. You know, I feel like Leonard Bernstein conducts like Beethoven's Fifth different than whoever. You know. Yeah, yeah that's kind of how remixing is. Yeah, it's like it's just different subtleties and how the instruments come in and out. 
So what's going on now? Uh, the waterfall has been out for quite a few months now, and it must be starting to feel more like the past than the present or certainly the future. I know there are some other things that are in the works, and you've been writing quite a bit. You did one new song tonight, Throwback. Mm -hmm. um, so what else is cooking right now? Hmm. A new album? A solo project? Yeah, lots of cooking. Movies? Out. TV? Tons of movies and TV shows about us. <laughs> and be flooding the airways. You're uh, going to be so sick of us. <laughs> yeah, lots going on. I mean, I'm working on another solo record. And then uh, about a couple, two or three weeks ago, for whatever reason, just a ton of new songs started popping out that I felt like would be good for another jacket record. So uh, I've been sending demos of those to the guys. And um, we were going to work on more of those before today, but then Prince passed away and we felt like we needed to pay tribute to him because he's one of our biggest heroes and inspirations. So we covered some of his songs uh, over the last week. and um, But we're working through new songs and gonna make another record sometime in the next year or so, I don't, I don't know. And this is gonna be leaning pretty, pretty rock and roll here. That's what I feel. Rumor has it. But records <laughs> have a funny way of controlling themselves you know I could say that I feel like just by saying that True. it's gonna be the slowest saddest <laughs> record I've ever made it's whatever the music gods want it to be how much did Louisville inform you know the, the direction that your lives and your music is taken I know that's kind of a loaded question but you know hometowns affect people in different ways I mean Louisville for me, the way I always try to explain it is everybody always thinks it is what it's not. Southerners think it's the North. Northerners think it's the South. It's not really in the middle, but it's kind of in the middle. It's like this weird place that I know we've always taken a really extreme point of pride of coming from there because I feel like it's given us a really unique viewpoint on the world and a vantage point on the world. And uh, I mean, I don't know. We've got so much great support there and so many great friends and family and musical community that it's always felt like a blessing so it's fun to go back there and play hometown shows and um, yeah I don't know there's just something unique about it that I've always been proud to call it home <laughs>